Yeah, it looks like the tree line gets pretty thick there. That might be a good spot. We don't just go to the first place we see that's good. We check an area pretty thoroughly. These Arizona Game and Fish research biologists are spending a lot of time in the White Mountains. So we, as part of the terrestrial research program, are doing a abundance study of Mexican wolves. They're searching for suitable locations to set up motion-activated trail cameras. Sometimes you can drive some of it, otherwise it's just hiking around, trying to find a good spot. Places where Mexican wolves are likely to be seen. We mostly like closed forest service roads, game trails that are, are pretty distinct because wolves are just going to travel the easiest path they can. And you can see this camera is facing out towards the meadow on a, a very distinct uh, game trail where Elgar wolves are um, as their major prey source. This is to determine the feasibility of using camera traps as a method for estimating abundance um, and determining uh, population size. All right, we're good to go. It's always fun to see what the cameras captured. Sometimes you'll see like elk um, kind of fighting. We've gotten bears, we've gotten uh, mountain lions, bobcats. These images are from a one month pilot study to learn how to get the best images of wolves. The wolves are the coolest thing we've seen so far. Yep, yep. <laughs> we probably got, I'd say nine or 10 um, different events of, of wolves you know, over a, over a month period. It was not a long period. Our pilot study was trying to figure out correct settings and placement patterns. Definitely making sure we find areas that have a little bit less vegetation than others as far as triggering the cameras. Yeah, grass blowing has, is definitely something that becomes a problem, uh, especially on the windy days or when things are growing up. We finished our pilot study and are currently using the information we learned from that to set up a grid of 125 cameras across um, most of Apache Sikri's forest. The cameras will be placed about six kilometers apart. So we're hoping to put out a grid that encompasses the entirety of the Mexican wolf range in Arizona. The White Mountains are where the endangered Mexican Wolf Recovery Project started back in 1998 with the release of a handful of captive raised wolves. As of 2018, the Mexican wolf population in Arizona and New Mexico had grown to a minimum of 131 wolves. Each winter, biologists count wolves from the ground and the air, thanks to GPS and radio collars on some of the wolves. By locating collared wolves, biologists can count other members of their packs and by marking each collar with a unique pattern of colored tape, they have a way to visually identify individual wolves. Those markings are critical to the camera study. Yeah, so um, the method that we're gonna be using is a mark recite model um, that's gonna utilize uh, the sightings of, of individual wolves, which will determine using their unique patterns on their GPS collars. Each collar costs about $2,000 a year to buy and operate. At about $500 a piece, the cameras could be a way to save money. As wolf populations and geographic distribution increase, um, we'll be able to, to estimate uh, abundance without maybe some of the costly uh, methods that we currently use. In 2019, researchers spent the month of October deploying 125 cameras. They'll be checking them about every two weeks. It'll be interesting to see what happens when the snow starts flying and, and see how that affects our access. We may have to weatherproof the cameras at some point, make sure snow drifts don't bury them. And for the most part, these shouldn't move for, for a year. After one year, they hope to have a clear picture of how effective cameras are as a tool for estimating Mexican wolf abundance. This whole study could be considered a pilot study. We're trying to determine if this method is a good method to take into the future. 